If you work in Cubase, have you ever noticed that little icon that you have on the project window? This is called Constraint Delay Compensation. What the heck is that all about? Hey, what's going on? The Chris Elim here from Mixdown Online. Now let's jump right in and talk about what Constraint Delay Compensation is. I've been asked that question more than once, um, and this is actually very confusing for a lot of people. So let's jump right in and check this out. Okay, I'm in Cubase. I only have one channel for this example in this session, so it's a very simple session. One audio channel to record my vocal using this microphone. Okay, so I'm using the method where I use the monitor option without having direct monitoring active in my project. If you don't know what I'm talking about, you have to watch last week's episode where I talk about the different ways you can record yourself and monitor yourself in Cubase. Okay, so by activating monitor, what's going to happen is that the signal coming from the microphone is going to go through Cubase and out of Cubase to my headphones. So I'm going to be able to hear myself while speaking to the microphone. There you go. So now I can hear myself. But as you can notice, I have like a slight delay, which is called latency. And this uh, can be managed by the amount of buffer size that we have with our sound interface. Uh, at this time, I have a uh, 128 samples of buffer size, and I get this tiny kind of a fuzzy effect um, that I can feel when I sing um, into the microphone. Now, at the moment, you're hearing both signals, the one coming from the uh, camera and the one coming from this microphone that is going into Cubase and out of Cubase using the monitor option right here. I made it this way so you can hear what latency sounds like. So just pay attention to that amount of latency that we're getting at the moment. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to open a full mix session where I have a bunch of plugins loaded. Now I have the same settings as I had on the simple project, same microphone, same everything, you know, the same buffer size also at 128 samples. And now listen to this. I'm going to click on monitor and oh, look at that. Huh? Now we have a lot of latency. Okay. So now you're probably asking yourself, why do I have way more latency on this session compared to the other session? It's the same buffer size. The reason is that I have like a bunch of plugins loaded and that some of those plugins will take more time to process, especially um, dynamic plugins that uh, are using um, a look ahead feature. Um, they will take more time to process and Cubase will compensate the full project for those plugins with a delay compensation on all the tracks. So all the audio stays in sync. So that's why I'm getting that delay, even if the buffer size is the same. So what constrained delay compensation will do, it's going to bypass and actually it's going to turn off all of those plugins that are generating that type of delay. So listen to the difference. If I activate constrained delay compensation and I do the same thing. And now look at that. You can hear that the latency is as it was in the first project, the empty project. So now I'm back to that 128 buffer size, you know, type of latency that I usually get without any plugins loaded. So this is what I'm going to get. Now, if you look, you know, let's uh, bypass uh, this one. All right. Now, if you look at the session, it's not all the plugins that were bypassed, but only the, uh, the plugins that generates a delay. And like I said, they're not only bypassed, but they are turned off and you can see them right here. So Magneto is one of them. There's also the limiter on the master bus that is turned off. Reverence also is uh, off. So this is going to give me the chance to do some recording in a session where I have a bunch of plugins loaded and that, you know, uh, some of those plugins are generating that delay. It will minimize latency during real-time recording and it's going to bring me back to what the buffer size is supposed to sound like as far as latency goes and this will work well if your buffer size is already low like it is right now in my case um, and the cool thing is that you can also do the same using a vst plugin okay so i have a virtual instrument loaded and if i deactivate uh, uh, constraint delay compensation I can feel that latency. It's, you know, it's very not comfortable to play with. Um, if I activate it, 
way more direct. Now it goes according to the actual buffer size of my session. You can find a constraint delay compensation on the top left of the uh, project window if you make it visible by clicking on the, uh, the menu on the top right and uh, make sure that the constraint delay compensation is checked on. This way you will have that visible on the top left of the project window or you can also find it at the bottom left of the project window. And if you go under edit and down to preferences and then uh, go down to plugins under VST, you have plugins and then you click on VST, you can then set up the delay compensation threshold for recording if you want to. Mine is set up to zero milliseconds and there you go so there you go this is what constraint delay compensation does in cubase i hope that was helpful if so don't forget to share and to like subscribe to the channel if you're new here and leave your comments or questions if you have some actually let me know if you already use this feature in cubase all right i gotta go take care see you next time